Hi everyone, welcome to Latina's Uprising. This is a space for Latinas to talk about how to get to law school, through law school, and how to establish a successful career as a new attorney. I am Nubia, and today I'm here to talk to you about being viewed suspiciously as a woman of color at work. Let's get started. So first I wanna mention that this video really came from the article from The New Yorker, where a former Biden staffer discusses um, her time there, She's an expert in immigration. She was brought in to work on immigration and she really felt like she encountered wall after wall of folks not really wanting to do the right thing of helping the folks, especially those at the border. I highly encourage folks to read it. It just shows a lot. And I think just as people who live in the States, we should know what's happening and you know make decisions. What I really wanna talk about in that article is the barrier she paints that she has faced throughout her career. Now, of course, this staffer, former staffer is a Latina, she is a lawyer, she's an expert in immigration, and she has worked both in the government and policy sides as well. So she has a lot of expertise, has deep knowledge in this really complicated area, but even with all those credentials, she details how she's always experienced this sort of suspicion that's placed upon her because of the fact that she's quote unquote close to the subject area. So yes, she's an immigration expert, but folks assume that her family are also immigrants and so they question her objectivity because she's so close to the issue. And that is something that I feel many of us will experience if we haven't already, and I wanna talk about it. The problem with overvaluing being objective is that it allows us to then continue to perpetuate policies and practices that cause harm. Because we're supposed to then just ignore the harm that's being inflicted and say, well, you know, we made the best objective choice. Yes, there's gonna be collateral damage, but what can you do? It's, it's an imperfect, very imperfect framework for which we make decisions. And for whatever reason, because it helps perpetuate bad policies, it is really put on a pedestal as this is the way lawyers and the legal industry make decisions. No emotion, no passion. We're all rational people. And it's nonsense because human beings have emotions and we, even the most objective decision has been guided by opinions and emotions by people, even if no one is being explicit about it. So, so that in and of itself within this profession just sucks. Now, let's say you're an attorney, you're a few years out, you understand the name of this game, you are objective, you present very rationally without emotion, you make your case for your client or you're in policy, you make your case for your subject matter to make sure that the right decisions are made, and you think you got it but maybe you don't really, because if you go back to the article in The New Yorker, she articulates an experience that many of us go through and sometimes we don't know we're going through it because not everyone's gonna come out and tell you, I don't trust your judgment because you're an immigrant. Like most people aren't going to tell you that. So what she talks about in this article is that even though she was a subject matter expert, coming through with all the facts and figures, people really did not take her as seriously as they should have because they believe that because she had an immigrant background or her family were immigrants, that she could not be objective. And therefore she was trying to sell them something that wasn't you know, as good as it could have been because it came from her. But I have heard this before, not to me directly, but I have heard other attorneys question whether attorneys of color are qualified to do the work to help communities of color because that attorney might be too close to that client community. I have heard that be said. And if it was said in front of me, it's also being said behind closed doors. It's also being put into practice when people are getting hired, when promotions are being decided, when decisions are getting made. This is not just a one-time thing that happened to this expert expert immigration advocate and to me some random day while I was sitting at a conference table. It happens a lot, it happens all the time and we have to be aware about it. So what does this mean? It means that you can try your best and you're as objective as possible and you, you know, you put up with these bad decisions or you put up with decisions you don't necessarily agree with because you agree that this is the right practice to do. And people might still think that the information, the advice that you're giving isn't up to snuff because you are too close to the subject matter. And that just sucks. It's so unfair. It's a presumption that's incorrect. It's a presumption made, made on stereotypes. And sometimes people won't even be explicit about it and you won't know why they're not taking you at your word and are not necessarily agreeing with your advice. And then you might start questioning that maybe I'm not a good lawyer, maybe I'm not giving good advice, maybe this is a bad decision, 
but it's not because you aren't good enough, it's because these folks have this blinder, this lens that sees you as not necessarily good enough simply because you're too close to an issue. How do we overcome this as an industry and as individuals? If you're a new attorney or even if you're a few years out, the best way to overcome this is to understand and decide how much you're gonna play into office politics. When I mean office politics, I mean understanding the codes, the customs, the, the standards within your own office to make sure you're able to get ahead. And that it will look different in big law, that will look different in legal aid, that will look different in two different firms in the same industry, but really understanding what makes a firm tick and go and deciding how much of that you want to adapt to will help you advance and or it will help you decide this is not for me i'm gonna bounce and that's totally fine too but you have to be actively paying attention rather than just passively letting your career happen to you because you know with friends like this we don't need enemies if folks invite you and they hire you into their firm but they are also just questioning all your advice because of your skin tone or your surname you know you need to be aware of that so you can decide that you're gonna go of course deciding to play the office politics raises a whole bunch of questions about are you abiding by professionalism standards, respectability? Do you really wanna play into that? Are you gonna acclimate? All of these things that are all really personal decisions that are dependent on your own circumstances and the type of career that you want. And we can have a whole discussion in a different video all about that if we want. But the reason I bring this up here is because being aware of office politics and deciding what your comfort level is to play in them is the bare minimum. And knowing those two things is going to help you make decisions going forward. And the second thing I recommend is that you find an ally within your office who is just as credentialed as you, who has the same position as you that can help endorse whatever advice or suggestion you're giving. And it sucks that you have to do that, but it can be really, really helpful just to have not just you, but someone else also advocating for the same thing. And if it's two people or more advocating for something, then folks might be a little more compelled to follow that majority. So it's just really helpful to kind of gather that type of um, support and endorsement for your work as possible. This is especially more pertinent to policymakers necessarily than like folks working directly with clients because lawyers with doing direct client work have a lot more autonomy with their cases but folks doing policy require a lot of buy-in from lots of people so if you're able to find folks who can support what you're doing it can help others view your work more objectively to say that has happened to me a lot as an immigrant myself advocating for immigrants this idea of well you're just trying to help your people get ahead i'm like yeah i am <laughs> you got me. But when I have other people who are just as highly educated, who are just as experts, also endorsing my ideas, then it doesn't seem as outlandish or as suspicious as if it's just myself. And I have to go out and find those folks. And it sucks, but if I want the outcome that I want for the client communities that I'm serving, I'm going to go that extra step. Now, don't think this is just about individuals. I'm not letting firms and leaders off easily. If you are a decision maker where the buck steps with you where you are the leader in an office and you're you stumbled across this video or you're trying to become a better ally what i am going to implore that you do is assess how you react how you feel and how you treat your staff of color your attorneys of color your policymakers of color i want you to stop and think do i always do i always second guess what they're telling me but i don't second guess my other staffer why is it that this is how i feel about this person and i don't feel this way about another it is so important that we do introspective work all of the time and it's not just the lighter skinned folks that need to do it all of us, we all have our biases. We all feel certain ways about certain people, certain groups. It's work that we have to break through. And if you're a leader in 2022 and you're not doing this work, then you are doing a disservice, not just to your staff, not just to your team, not just to your board, but to your client community and this industry as a whole. So I implore you, if you are a leader within a firm, you're a hiring manager, if you're a senior staff attorney, if you're a director, whatever, really do the work to assess how you are viewing and treating those underneath you to make sure that you are being as fair as possible, that you're being as objective as possible, because it's likely that you're not. Truth hurts. <laughs> so 
So let me know what you think below. Let me know if you've ever had a situation where folks were just super resistant to taking your advice and you weren't sure why. Let me know if you've left any of your jobs because of the way you were being treated, where you weren't being viewed as the expert that you are. If you have questions about being a lawyer, about law school in general, please make sure you visit us at latinasuprising.com or send us a message and make sure you like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.